again. Uh, hi, my name's Andy. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about Happy Plugins. Um, so this is me. Um, by the way, I'm not related to the royal family, even though I am British. Look at the name, spelling's different. <laughs> Um, who am I? Uh, I'm an engineer uh, and I work for OpenTable in the UK. Um, if you don't know OpenTable, our business is uh, restaurant reservations. Um, our stack is mainly C Sharp and Node with Java, um, a little bit of like Go and Ruby and Clojure and all that stuff thrown in, so a real mixed bag. Um, we've been using Happy for about, well, in our team, we've been using Happy for about 12 months now. Um, I first heard about Happy at a Node user group meetup, um, and then I was given the opportunity to rewrite a an awful .NET um, legacy system, uh, and I was like, great, let's use Happy, um, and we've been using it ever since. Uh, so we've got maybe a dozen APIs now um, of varying sizes uh, and complexities. It's all internal APIs. Um, there are a couple of internal tools, um, which uh, internal websites, but our main business is, is, is APIs. Um, our stack is happy running on Ubuntu um, with a MongoDB backend and some Redis thrown in there for good measure. Um, so as we've learned happy and as we've learned, uh, as we've grown our kind of happy stack, um, we started to coalesce shared code using the plugins interface. Um, so. I'm not going to stand here and read you the docs because that would be really dull, um, but they're there, go and have a look. Uh, what I am going to do is just show you some of the really simple stuff that we've done that makes our lives easier. Um, so the first plugin I wrote was pretty simple. All it does is you point it at a directory, um, it walks the directory and says, is there something in there that looks like a roots file? If so, call server.root on it. Um, basically it was to get rid of the boilerplate of calling server.root everywhere. Um, the, so the, the main part, parts of this plugin, you've probably seen this already a couple of times today, um, but the register function which takes the server options and next callback, um, so the key bit there is the server. So that server object is exactly the same server object that you get when you do new happy.server which means anything that you're doing in your application code, you can wrap it in a plugin. Um, and that's really, really powerful. Frankly, it beats the hell out of app.use. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the, the registration code for registering a plugin, you call server.register, you give it a list of plugins, each plugin has uh, its own little options um, object, and then at the end you get a nice callback that says, if everything's good, start the server, yay. Um, so another one of the plugins that we wrote was uh, for versioning. Now, everybody you talk to has a different attitude on versioning. Um, internally at OpenTable, we have a convention of using URL versioning, which I think is a bit icky. Um, but I wanted to support header versioning as well. Um, so you create the little plugin that can uh, monkey with the request and say, well, uh, if, it's, if it looks like a URL versioned uh, URL, then grab the, uh, the version out of it, and you set the request um, prerequisite uh, with, the, with the data, with the version. Um, this code uses the on prehandler extension point, um, which is the interesting bit. Uh, the extension points, there are six of them, uh, which cover the request lifecycle. Um, so you've got on request is the first, and then on pre-auth, on post-auth, uh, on pre-handler, on post-handler, um, and on pre-response. So basically, anything you want to do during the, the, the life cycle of the request, you can hook into one of these extension points, and boom, um, you've got the request. Um, if, you're, um, if you're not covering things that happen in the life cycle, there are the server events as well. So you've got uh, the error, uh, log, so anytime uh, server.log is called, fires an event. Um, anytime server.error is called, fires an event. Um, and you've got the other interesting ones, you've got request, obviously, and tail. So if you don't know about tail, it's basically uh, when the request is just about done, 
um, and the response has been sent, then the tail event is fired. Um, so that's kind of the the last event in the life cycle. Oh, my laptop's gone to sleep. Come on. <coughs> ah. Right, good. Smashing. Um, yeah, sorry. So tail is the last event in the life cycle. Um, and it's stuff like this that makes happy really lend itself to the kind of the node way that uh, uh, Fred was talking about it yesterday. You have small modules which do small things. Um, and it means there yeah, you, you get the composability because you've got a fully, so you've got a full server object here, which means anything you want to do, you can do. There's no, there's no monkeying about that you have to do. You've got it all up front. Um, another classic example we've got. So we use um, Nagios for alerting, um, and we have a convention of uh, using a service status endpoint. Um, so for our team, what we do is we have a, um, a monitor which has a path on it. Um, so it says, right, I'm going to hit slash foo slash bar slash one um, and time the request. So it does a server.inject, times it, and then you wrap the response. So you can, you can really easily just put, it just makes setting up the, the Nagios monitors a case of configuration. Um, so that's the response you get out of it. You get the response code, the time it took, the path it hit, and status. So status is either OK or failed. And you just point Nagios at that, and away you go. Um, and it's the, the, the server.inject is, is only part of it. Um, but most of the stuff I'm showing here is kind of the boilerplate uh, extensions. Um, I mean, we have similar stuff for uh, initializing database, uh, doing uh, feature toggling, doing um, uh, health and heartbeat and all that sort of thing. Um, and you can take this to the logical conclusion as well, which is that everything in your application can be a plugin. Um, we saw it earlier uh, with John, um, where your application code is wrapped in a plugin, which means it's got a standard interface to the rest of the world. Um, if you want a really good example of this, I would recommend you go and look at uh, the code for NPM's new website, because it's fucking awesome, and I've been geeking out about it for a while now. Um, so, conclusion, plugins are awesome. If you're not wrapping your stuff in plugins, and you're, you're making more work for yourself in the future, because you have to write the glue code over and over again. Um, whereas if, you, if you're using um, plugins, then it's a standard interface to the rest of the, your application or the rest of the world. Um, I hope this has been slightly interesting. I realize I was in the after lunch spot, so hopefully everybody's still awake. Thanks very much. <laughs>